Hello, hello, hello. So, you've just bought your new steel, or else you've got a steel and you've upgraded it, which is what I'm doing. Now, if you're buying for a company like Steel Spirits, um, it, it should be clean enough. And it would be a good idea to get some washing detergent or liquid soap, washing up liquid, as we call it in the UK, and give it a bit of a scrub. Um, just get rid of any dust and, and cardboard particles that are on there and give it a good old rinse. But if someone is building you a still, for, uh, uh, from um, like actually welding it all together for you or you're buying it direct from um, the manufacturer or supplier like if you're going to Aliexpress or Alibaba or somewhere like that they're not going to have the time or the the money to be able to clean it properly now a problem with welding is you need to use flux and flux is one of the main um, toxic residue that can be left on steel parts and that can be obviously everything from your boiler to columns um, so they really need to be cleaned. You cannot and must not just use it straight out of the box. Um, fairy liquid and things like that don't dissolve the resin, or sorry, the resin, the uh, flux. So it will still stay there even if it looks nice and clean. So the best ways of doing this is using an acid wash. Now for uh, acid wash, uh, the, the cheapest and one of the uh, very um, effective ways is using white vinegar. So what the tried and tested means is to soak everything in um, a mixture of 50% so uh, white vinegar and 50% water. Let that soak for 24 hours. After 24 hours, take it out, rinse it off, and then put it onto your still, and then put another uh, solution of 50% water and 50% vinegar, five liters of each, into the boiler and distill it. Don't use any cooling water in your columns. And that can be obviously whether it's a pot still or a reflux still. Um, don't run any cold cooling water. Just let them run hot. Not as much steam going through there because all that steam and the acid from the vinegar is going to eat through the uh, toxins that are, and everything that's been left behind. And uh, it will basically clean it all off for you. Once you've done that uh, vinegar run, you need to strip it all down again, rinse it all off under the tap and he needs to do a sacrificial spirit rum. Now, this is very important. There may be certain things that will not go with water or with the vinegar vapor or vinegar liquid, and you need the alcohol itself to be able to clear it. The vapors from the uh, ethanol um, will, will help you to um, get rid of anything else that's left behind. Now, obviously, it is very important you do not drink that ethanol, or that, that spirit that comes out. It has to be dumped. Now, if you don't want to use good quality wash that you've just made, well fine, use some towels or heads or anything like that, it doesn't matter, as long as it's got a reasonable amount of um, alcohol in there, it'll be fine. What I tend to do is, because it's so cheap, I'll just make a, a tomato paste wash and I'll just shove it through there. Then obviously once you've done that sacrificial spirit run, it's stripping it down, rinsing it all off, and then all, your, all done, it's ready to be fully used. It really is a pain to do it, but at the same point, you only need to do it the once. I'm probably going to be doing it once a year myself, just to give myself like a, a deep clean once a year so I know that everything is fine. You don't need to do that, but it, it doesn't, it's a bit of a hassle, but it doesn't actually cost too much money. So what I've done is I bought myself two five liters. Now this one's already empty, that's in here. And so I've added five liters of this white vinegar in here and also five liters of water in here. Now, other very important thing is it needs to be food grade um, because obviously you're going to be using all these parts going to be touching food. So like this one says perfect for pickling, cooking and cleaning. So I've just dumped that in there. Now, I also wouldn't recommend once you've used your solution uh, to, to leave everything in for 24 hours to use that in your still. It's going to be dirty, isn't it? So you don't want to be putting dirty stuff inside your boiler. And then it literally is taking all your tubes and everything else and dropping it in. Right, now they're all in there. I'm going to close up my box. I would recommend if you're going to be doing this, starting this like I am in the house, you take it outside after 24 hours, put it in the garage shed, or just leave it outside. If you think it might rain, you could put a bag over it, or if you're lucky, you've got a box that's got a lid on there, like a big old Tupperware storage box, um, then yeah, leave it outside, because obviously this kind of smells quite strongly of vinegar, uh, and it's only gonna get worse, and the last thing you want to do is wake up in the morning and the house reeks. 
So I'm going to put this outside the back door now and uh, we'll come back tomorrow, give it a little rinse, get it on the sill and get it going. So uh, see you in a sec. It's been 24 hours now, so I've taken everything out. And when rinsing, it literally is as simple as this. Make sure you get all the way in on the outside. And the thread. Keep turning it all the time. All right, it's been two hours so far, and as you can see, it is putting out some nice vapors. It's quite a tall wire. Now um, I'm using the stainless steel lid at the moment because the copper uh, Olympic dome that I normally have that's on a separate being doing a separate project at the moment, so uh, that's being used. But yeah, there we go. Now I have noticed one issue. And then there's a leak. Oh, not that. So basically, path of least resistance is collecting up here, obviously, where uh, the spout. So I want to put some PTFE tape on there. But outside of that, I've been checking all of my gaskets that I've made. And these are silicon gaskets wrapped in two layers of PTFE tape. And this is what I do for my gaskets because I find PTFE gaskets are a little bit too stiff. And sometimes they can leak, whereas uh, silicon is good without sort of stopping leaks. But obviously, you've got the rubber, and I do not want rubber in contact with this high percentage and high grade alcohol. See, so yeah, look at that steam. Oof, that stinks. Which reminds me of a fish and chip shop. So, I'm going to leave this to run for a tiny bit longer. I'm going to do it for two and a half hours. And then uh, what I'll then do is shut it down let it cool, I'll clean everything off or rinse everything down and then uh, I'll be doing my spirit run straight after. Oh, see you in a sec. So I'm currently doing the spirit, the uh, sacrificial spirit wash. We have just over a litre and a half of spirit coming out. So uh, yeah, now I need to run this fully and get rid of all of the get rid of the distillate that comes out and uh, run it like normal really there you go obviously it's now distilling well uh, we've got a litre left and uh, or litre done realistically you need to run this as normal as I said before it's it's it feels murder that you're doing a full wash the full run and that's all being thrown away in theory with this setup i'm getting going to be getting well hopefully 94 to 96 percent abv which is the highest you can get uh, due to the size of the uh, column and the packing that i've got but just remember you cannot use this okay you need to run a proper wash through this obviously you can use heads and tails but you must run it normally, the normal amount of time. So I'm going to wait until nothing more comes out, uh, including all the tails, so just going to keep running it and then dispose the lot. I will be doing a, uh, a, a reading, alcohol reading, to then see what percentage this is out of curiosity, because this obviously is a brand new setup, but um, it must be thrown away. All right, well, I hope you found this video informational and it helps you with your new still or new still parts. If you have any questions or comments or you'd like to tell me how you do it or, or, or any other things that you think that uh, I could have done better, please tell me. Um, while I've been distilling for or brewing for, I don't know, eight, nine years, I can't actually remember, I have only recently received um, the Love Bring Boiler and the T500 head maybe a year ago. I've only done eight, nine washes or so. Uh, most of it all just experimenting and playing with it because I've been running an air still for uh, quite a while. So I'm still learning myself over how this stuff works. So I'm no professional and don't know. So please do, do tell me what you're doing. It'd be lovely to hear. Excellent. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of my videos.